which is also an assumption that cannot hold, even in economics. Can I chill? Mashmira, I'm also coming from Kihar. Chief Wako Nidani. Sawa, tuka ukea bro, asante sana. Now, as I come to the cross, as I come to the cross, I read the beam. Somebody will ask, how is youth and taking part in governance in what you talked about? Many times you have come to confuse that the only leadership we can do is leadership in politics. There is a lot of other leaders that are needed out there in our economy and especially in the business front and as you craft what you want to do in with your life in the future i want you at your free time to go and google for free forbes magazine and when you google forbes magazine go and check the richest wealthiest people in the world in terms of their net worth you realize there is one person there called Bernard Arnold. What is his company? Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy. What do they do? Watches, bags, expensive accessories. What is associated with those kind of purchases? They are irrational purchases. You don't buy a watch out of the value in use. You buy the watch out of the value in exchange and for ostentation. That when I wear, people recognize who I am. Unfortunately, not many people actually know their prices. So you wear a 10 million watch, but then it's only you who knows their, 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 their worth. <laughs> Number two in that list, I may not follow through all of them. Let me just mention, and uh, not in any particular order. You'll get Elon Musk or Elon, Elon Musk. What is their company? Their company is Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink. By the way, Elon Musk is the founder of PayPal, the PayPal you use when you're doing academic writing to be paid. It was started by Elon Musk. Then he sold it. What do they do? Electric cars, SpaceX going to space, and internet issues. What is what can you call that category of sector? Maybe automotive or automobiles and IT. Three. Jeff Bezos. What is the company of Jeff Bezos? What is it? Amazon. What is the sector of Amazon? What is Amazon? What, what sector is Amazon? IT. There is a lot of other things, logistics in it, but it's basically an IT company. The other one is Larry Page, one of the founders of Google, 107 billion US dollars. The other one is Warren Buffett. What is his company? Berkshire Hathaway. Where does Berkshire Hathaway invest? They are the number one investors in Apple. Their biggest investment, more than half of the investment of Berkshire Hathaway is in Apple. What is Apple? A phone. Food sector? IT. Bill Gates follows. Microsoft. Which sector is that? Is it real estate? Is it manufacturing? Is it agriculture? Is it dairy? Is it fisheries? Michael Bloomberg follows data. They have TV stations and the rest, but their main business is data. And especially useful data like the one I'm, I'm citing, but more market related. The other one is Indian, Mukesh Abani. 
Which company? Reliance Industries. Which one? Petrochemicals, ETC. But what has brought him in the line branch of, of, of the Forbes list? It is a company called Geo. Which sector? IT, telecoms. The other one is Steve Ballmer, the former CEO of Microsoft. So Microsoft. Then there is Mayer's family. Do you know which company is it? It's called El Oriel. What do they do? Luxuries. The other one is Larry Page. If you go to the next one, you'll get somebody called Amancio Ortega. Which company? Zara. What do, they, do Zara do? Are they in mining? Are they in real estate? No. What? Ostentatious purchases. If I don't end anything there, you already have the point. When you are graduating, you have to associate with the industries of the moment. The industries of the moment, you don't need to struggle knowing. You just look at where is most value being created. Is it a coincidence that 10 years ago, this Forbes list was a tech person and a finance person? 30 years back were industrialists. It is not by coincidence. It is by being in the right place at the right time. And the right time, it is you to fashion. The right place, it is also you to fashion. But how do you do it? The best laboratory is history. Just look at where you are, where has, what has happened in the past, so that you position yourself properly. All I've said there is that if you look at all the billionaires of the world, they are either, the top 20, they are either in tech or they are in luxuries. Tom Boyer. Can you just imagine, especially those people who are in here, see your son, comrades, because comrades in the 22, 23. Just imagine, at my age, Tom Boyer was already gone one year. 38, and you look at the impact Tom Boyer created. And then most of the times, I see people saying how youth in Kenya are taking their positions. There is no lazier generation of youth than the current generation. None. Why? You call me here as a young person. But the young person of history are tomboyers and the others. What have they achieved at our age? At your age as a comrade, at 23, Tom Boyer was already a national leader. He was already leading Kenya African Union. At 33, he was already a minister who was poised even for higher positions. But then, is it just Tom Boyer alone? If you look historically, you read about French Revolution. The person who led the French Revolution, Napoleon Bonaparte, became a general before that. He became an emperor at 35. Napoleon Bonaparte. If you look at people like Nelson Mandela, he could have become president much later, but his involvement in the national politics in his 30s. Mwai Kebaki became the leader of Kanu as the CEO at around 30 years old. Look at the people we can relate with very well. Anyang Nyongo from Yakisumu. People like our current president, Ed the age of the comrades who are sitting here, they were already doing, uh, they were already doers of things. But then even the current situation, go to France currently. How old is Emmanuel Macron? He became the president of France at Bayari 4042. Do you know the age of the prime minister of France? Even before you talk about the prime minister of France, you need to Google what is the GDP of France before you answer that question. The Prime Minister is 34 years old. And he was not first from a village in or a nested in France. No. He was already an MP at 28.
That's the Prime Minister of France. And we are here saying, we are Congress of Tomboya University, we have time, we organize ourselves, to Najipanka, we have time. You have no time, my comrades. If it is starting, you start now, not tomorrow. But others also have ascended. Not, we can't talk about the method, but they have arrived. I'm not talking about the method. The current president of Burkina Faso. I'm not talking about the process, how he got there. Traole is how much? How old? He's 35. But how old was Sankara, Thomas Sankara? Thomas Sankara became president at 35, at 35 years old, already president of Burkina Faso. 34, 35, he was already president of Burkina Faso. What am I trying to say? Even Abiy Ahmed, just here in Ethiopia, became prime minister at 42. Others are not also on this position. I'm not talking about how he got it. If you go to Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman, the current um, crown prince, you can literally see the ruler there because the king uh, he, he does most of the functions. We are actually intimates, including the month of Baal. But what is the GDP of Saudi Arabia? You can check later. What am I trying to say? Sometimes we look at our edges and we think a time is coming for us to be useful in our societies, in our localities, in our countries, in our continent. That time is not coming. That time came. But then, as we do that, and I'm talking now, especially the African countries, and especially citing some of my friends, for us to be credible as youthful generation of leaders, we have to start with clear-cut, pristine policies. Policies that you don't struggle to explain. There is a crop of African youthful leaders coming up, and we wish them the best. When you go to South Africa, there is Julius Malema. Do I believe in the policy of EFF? Maybe there is room for discussion from where I sit. Because we have to keep on gradually differentiating between campaigning to win and governing. So that as you come up as leaders from Tomboya University, your guiding principle must not be you becoming a leader, must be you becoming an agent of change in the economy of Kenya and Africa. When you put yourself first, then you have no policy. You become a populist. After populism, you are given power. You do not know what to do with power. When you hold power and you do not know what to do with power, power burns you. And I am hopeful that the current crop of people who are coming up are coming up with good policies. I have cited South Africa. We have seen young movement, movement of young people, of course led by EFF. You go to a place like Uganda, our neighbors. You see a young man, Bobby Wine, challenging the authority. But then we forget one thing. We call Bobby Wine a young man. We forget what age did the current president actually become president. You know, sometimes because of the current, the current, I mean, because of the, the current, what we see now is what is there now. We forget what has been. Yes, there is a youthful leader in uh, Uganda, but then we seem like he's moving too fast. But he's moving too fast against what? The current president of the same country, at what age did he, was he Bobby Wine of the current situation? You go to Nelson Chamisa of Zimbabwe. At that one, he was already a minister. Senegal are having election this week. There is a young man called Osman Sonko who 
was actually restricted from being on the ballot, but his party is sponsoring another song called there. What am I trying to say by mentioning these people? As the young people of Kenya and Africa, the best gift we can give to our continent is not for us to be ambitious, for ambition's sake. It is for us to place the ambitions of our country ahead of our personal ambitions. And if you place the ambition of Tom Boyer University ahead of yours, you think about Tom Boyer University. You talk about what you are building. You talk about the courses you are offering, how they can become better. The young people of Africa, and I am glad, majority are on that line. We must think about our countries first. And our countries first is to think about clear-cut policies that can transform our economies. Because our secular economies as uh, uh, African countries are what become the economy of Africa as a continent. And with those many remarks, I thank you very much. May God bless you. Have a seat. Uh, I don't want to spoil uh, the best of the information that we've forgotten, which is going to propel this institution, this country, and the people who are seated in front of us, the young people and leaders of today, not tomorrow. I always tell my students, you are leaders of today and not tomorrow. And because you are the leaders of today and tomorrow, you must do the right thing. It's not devotion. You cannot lead today if you don't play by the rules. And that has been reiterated, and therefore I don't want to uh, spoil the, the nice speech. Having said that, Chief Guest allow me also to appreciate our partners. We have three guests who have come to visit Tongue University. Not on today, they've been here, and they're going to be our partners for quite a long time from the United Kingdom, 